Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Sunday. This is going to be interesting. I'm actually shooting this on Friday for Patreon as an early video. Um, and uh, was originally, I was just going to do a video for Patreon. But um, I, I'm i going to take a break from YouTube until I finish Crystal Planet. And so I had done a video a few days ago announcing that. But I hate those kind of announcements. I think that they just come off as sort of weird. Like, why is he leaving? What's going on? I just want to get I want to get the first book done and so I've got probably two weeks left on it and I just need to focus and get it over with also for a patreon this is the last month um, that I'm doing reviews and lessons for the time being so um, I'm gonna make that announcement over there I've been telling people um, that I've been talking to directly but yeah I until until I get really going on blaster kid I'm putting that on hold because it's just there's not enough time in the day or week for me to get everything done anymore. And so something's got to give. And uh, um, when, um, you know, when that's the case, you have to focus. But so this was interesting. I saw Jeff, um, J. Scott Campbell, a lot of people call him Scott now, um, uh, posted this online. Um, I, I was really impressed by some things on this. And in a weird way, he kind of gave me an art lesson without giving me an art lesson. Um, and I know Jeff and I'm good friends with him. And so it was, it was really, really cool seeing this. And I think maybe because there's a little bit of a music slant on it, um, working on the Joe Satriani thing for Crystal Planet, um, kind of made it interesting too. But, but I just, I'm going to go over this and then we're going to look at some Danger Girl. So Super Fun Sunday will be um a, a real fun one and we're overall we're going to look at danger girl but we'll probably spend 10 or 15 minutes um going through all the works and progresses that he showed of this piece because i do think it's actually very interesting and then um i will continue to do the live kelsey shows i think i'm going to do at least one more and then um i might just uh, take a break from that too I, like i said i need to get i need to get on blaster kid is really what it comes down to crystal planet is is an obligation that I need to complete and so I need to focus on that make sure that that looks good and that I'm I'm happy with that um, and that I really want to get on blaster kid I don't feel complete not working on it right now and so you want me to feel complete <laughs> so anyway let's get to this so J Scott Campbell he's a music fan I would not consider him a musician although I do think that he plays a little bit his attention to detail on this piece is is really really impressive it's it's actually staggering that a non-musician did such a nice job on the drum kit and all the hardware um this tweed amp that he's got here the guitar uh, i mean this is it's very jeff is very deceiving because you see a piece like this and you can just soak it in real quick you go it's two pretty girls i've seen jeff draw that a million times um and uh, there's some stuff behind him big deal big whoop dude this is a lot of work it is a lot of work and and for someone like him he probably had to reference a lot of this i don't think that jeff knows intrinsically uh, how a symbol uh attaches to the stand you know and all this stuff on there i mean i've been around it for years and even i needed to double check and look at stuff like this when i need to draw it um you know and uh, guitars can be a pain in the ass to draw and he look he may have used reference who knows but but uh, I, that's beyond the point the point is and, and danger girl will be ex in uh good examples of this as well he's really really insanely um driven to give you the best pieces that he can it's it's pretty amazing and that's why he's so successful and when i saw this i was like man like the jeans look like jeans and it's not just the rips in them but like even the thickness of the folds over here on the carnage uh pants we'll call it um you know like he he's able to really identify with the way that the fabric moves on the figure what kind of material it is it's all just very very impressive so let's get into this and look at some of the whips that he was uh, kind enough to share and uh we can sort of get into his thought process a bit it's gonna be fun. All right, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be super fun. All right, let's go, friends. All right, let's see what we got. Cause he he actually posted some um, thumbnails there towards the end, I think. Let's see. Or I can actually just go like this. Where are the thumbnails? 
Okay, well, there's the pencils. I want to see. He did two. He has two. Um, where the fuck are they? Oh, this. So this is one of his roughs. Um, Jeff is nuts. He's very methodical, and um, you could just see in his process. If, if if you're a fan of his work and you don't have the Danger Girl sketchbook or any of his sketchbooks for that matter, the ones that are actually sketchbook sketchbooks, his process is fascinating, and he's just he really thinks everything out like he's creating like a movie or something it's really incredible um so i don't know i'm gonna assume that that he probably still does his thumbnails on 11 by 17 paper he generally will take like an 11 by 17 board let me grab a brush um like like if this is a piece of comic book paper he does this and he'll do four thumbnails on it approximately um, and, uh, that's how I've always seen him sort of like come up with ideas. So then he may have scanned it or taken a photo of it and then kicked it into Photoshop just to, uh, sort of use this as some sort of an example of what he was thinking. But, uh, this is probably the liquify tool. If you go into the filters, there's, um, depending on what, uh, you know, where is it? Uh, distort noise. Well, liquify comes up here for me, but um, yeah, I mean, you can go in. So he probably took the cover, and then you can go in and kind of, you know, move stuff around with the liquify tool. So, you know, my guess is that he put that in another layer and then, you know, did this kind of thing to get it to look like it's on their bodies. Nicely done. So, liquify tool is your friend. I don't know if there's something similar to that in um, Clip Studio. Clip Studio has transform, but their transform is okay. I don't think it's as powerful as Photoshop's um, filter tools, but who knows? Maybe they are. I have both, so when I want to do stuff that I'm most familiar with, goddamn, this plane is loud. Shut up! Oh, it's a helicopter. Anyway, all right, let's go. There was one more thumbnail or uh, prelim. I want to see if I can find it really quick. I love that he shares all this stuff, though. It's actually very, very cool. Oh, yeah, here it is. This is nice. So the magazine is ripping apart, and we get to see their, like, sort of alternate um, identities. He's real clever. He's Oh, and see, and that was one of the things that I wanted to point out, too, is, is Jeff's ideas are fantastic, and we're going to see it throughout the design of both of these characters. Um, every little sort of um, accessory that they have will be um, neat little identifiers for the characters. And um, yeah, there's an attention to detail that is very inspiring and reminds me to always think more. Where I first got wind of that was years and years ago. There was a website called Shane Glines Drawing Board, which um, was a forum where artists would share their work and they would do group drawing um, challenges and stuff like that. And so once a week they would post photo reference and they would say, come up with a drawing based on this photo reference. And the level of creativity, maybe a um, hundred people would participate. Some of the people would just go so beyond the photo reference and come up with these just incredible ideas that, that it was a constant reminder to me to think more to 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 try to be more creative to try to be more original to really go well beyond my first idea not necessarily the reference idea but what i'm saying is is that be more creative because there's people out there that are just going to smoke you with their their creativity um and uh, you know just literally drawing from reference is kind of boring so anyway he's she's got the sid vicious little lock necklace that Duff McKagan also uses from Guns N' Roses. Um, pretty classic rendering on the shirt. I mean, you would see this on Abby Chase, maybe even Roxy from Gen 13. So this is all on point. His hair is always really, really nicely done. The faces are cute and pretty, and, and uh, that's how it is. So she's got a little tweed, like, tied bracelet, and then the other one that's like a little leather one with little studs on it. Um, and... Uh, her pants I thought were really cool. So she's got a very, very cool belt buckle. I mean, it's definitely represents like Spider-Man or, or Spider-Gwen or whatever. Um, so 
he actually credited the original artists that did the work on the shirt. She's got the British flag, the American flag. She's got four leaf clover. Her jeans have been cut up and and antiqued. <laughs> I don't know what do they call it. Um, but uh, yeah, I love I love how the fabric looks. And it looks, you know, it looks loose, spontaneous. It doesn't look like he slaved over, like, his line work on it. It works, you know. Is it as tight and as lickety split as, like, a pro inker might go in and do? No, not necessarily, but it works. It's all tight where it should be. I mean, again, look at the drum set. I mean, he's even got this. Jeff, you're crazy. How do you do it? You just, like... Man, next time I draw a drum kit, you've raised the bar for me. <laughs> so here's some of his pencils. She's got the little necklace. It's a cute touch. Her face looks cute. She's smiling. She doesn't look scary. Sometimes when I draw people smiling, they look a little creepy. Um, drumstick is nice, you know. Looks good. Looks good. And he even does the... um the box i don't know what they call the box but um the little box it's up in the corner of the thing so never one to just leave it to chance jeffrey will create art to do it so and it represents the piece we've got carnage we've got venom it's very cool and here it is in color we've got the venom i mean carnage uh, guitar which looks really cool strap is on point he's got humbucker pickups a bridge i'm sure if we could oh i was gonna say he probably put a trem bar he did could be a floyd rose he's got the locking nut go jeff go what kind of tuners are those are those go toes <laughs> the amp looks good like the tweed it's like it's kind of like he's got a little bit of like a basement sort of vibe going on like a fail it's like a fender fender tweed amp or something i don't know maybe not basement i don't know yeah i love her jeans the red jeans too look great this is nice the bunching of the fabric up there but anyway but yeah i wanted to show you guys this and so this is him inking the piece he puts the pen in so that you know size relationships it's very important we've talked about the hand you know you could always have your fingers and the hands sort of coming in the frame people love that it will get you more likes it's a proven fact i've 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 shown this to be true <laughs> yeah her face is cute he got real into texture on girl skin it was interesting all of a sudden there was a point where um i mean i know mary jane's got freckles but uh he started putting more kind of freckles and moles and things on people it was interesting more texture and she's even got a little rocker bracelet on the other arm her belt's cool too in fact actually here we've got the hand with the pencil and this is nice cool cast shadow behind the neck the guitars really are kind of a they're a little bit of a pain in the ass to draw some shapes body shapes are a little bit easier but even deciding how to handle the strings over the frets and stuff like that can be a little bit of a you know there's decisions that need to be made it's got volume and levels and all kinds of stuff so cool very inspiring the drum kit's actually pretty cute Okay, so that was it. I wanted to show that before we get into Danger Girl. Now we're going to look at Danger Girl for a bit, and then i got to get to work. I'm telling you. So this is the cover for Danger Girl. We'll look at these last two. Uh, this is really nice. So in this, you can purchase at Jeff's store very soon. I'm, I'm not 100% sure when it goes on sale. So it's interesting. 2020. So he did this uh, before uh, the year change. But it's just dropping now. And this may go on sale Saturday, so by the time you see this video, it may already be. Patreon won't, though. They're going to get the video right as soon as I'm done. But yeah, I mean, I know I'm trying to help so many people learn to draw and understand their art better and stuff like that. I think that, that, that um, Jay Scott is an excellent, excellent artist to look at in terms of an attention to detail. And even if you don't draw like him, it's hard not to appreciate um, his commitment to... Uh, 
what he does because he's damn good at it. So all right, we're gonna grab. I've looked at Danger Girl before, so we're gonna move a little bit further in the story. In fact, let's go to the issue that I did. Does it have? Yeah, I've worked on um, this issue, so let's. Yeah, we'll go to here. All right, so we're gonna look at the last chunk of the book. This was, so originally when they started the series, it was the classic team of J. Scott Campbell and Alex Garner doing the art. At some point, Alex Garner, which now he's a cover artist, um, uh, was getting more and more interested in penciling himself. And so he wanted to break away from just inking. And um, I think initially Tom McWaney and Scott Williams were inking Jeff, maybe Sandra Hope too. Uh, but at some point, people kind of started to tap out. Jeff's stuff is very, very time-consuming and kind of hard to ink in a weird way. Not hard um, technically, hard in terms of it's it's a little bit fatiguing. He has a lot of shapes um, and a lot of stuff like this. You see where there's like all these little spots. Like just even filling in the blacks on her costume could take you an hour. You know, it's very, very time-consuming style. So... They were exhausting, but I ended up doing, I think, 22 pages of the this last issue that we're going to look at. So quite a bit of this stuff is actually my inks um, on issue 7. It was fun. It was hard, and it was exhausting. And, um, uh, you know, sometimes people ask me, like, was Travis hard to ink? I mean, in some ways, J. Scott Campbell was actually harder, I think, just because you had to have such phenomenal control. And credit to Alex Garner for that, because... Um, he was the one that kind of set the um, the bar with that. So this is interesting. I'm, I'm not going to try to play guessing games on who inked what on the pages. I'll, I can point out which ones I inked. But this is cool because this is a little bit Metal Gear Solid. Um, if you've ever played Metal Gear Solid, like, you know, you just almost need the question mark popping up. But this was a nice little touch. But this is an interesting time frame because this is right around the time that Travis and I were doing uh, Wildcats. And so I've talked about this before, but that opening sequence with Grifter and Wildcats to me was very reminiscent of Metal Gear Solid. And I still to this day, I'm not 100% sure which came first. I mean, you could definitely figure it out. But um, yeah, it was I, I think it was a coincidence. I don't remember Travis ever playing Metal Gear Solid. And I know Jeff did play some video games, but he wasn't that much of a gamer either. But anyway, this reminds me of that um, first um, level when you come out of the water. But, you know, again, really my point of even selecting Jeff is... Um... Oh, come on, seriously? I was like he makes everything look like you just go well that makes sense like that's that's how that would look you know something like this this is a lot of work <coughs> it's not sketchy you know i mean it's a tight drawing of a gun the hands are pretty much on point and i mean what i, what I mean by pretty much is it's it's not like he's trying to do photorealism i mean he's got a very distinct way that he's um um decided to draw the human figure and stuff like that like it's like an animator you know he's got a style guide in his mind which is his j scott camel style but like even like this the creases in these pants you know the different material you've got like leather canvas or whatever it would be um you know and then leather again like binding it all this stuff is so nice this too the kind of like can't remember what that's called um this is all just great looking stuff even this is a different texture this is a different texture i mean he's just got it down this is great too he really picks great shots i mean i think there's there's a, just such a fun enjoyment level to seeing how he draws that's so good he's so damn good definitely was interesting is so so some people know this but so the first job that i had at wildstorm was i was hired as alex garner's assistant slash i was brought in as an intern um shortly thereafter but i was initially hired as alex garner's assistant on gen 13 so my first introduction to wildstorm was actually working with j scott campbell and alex uh, at a very menial level to be clear i wasn't doing much of anything other than um 
filling in blacks at first, and then I would do little tiny, you know, like like Alex might have me ink something like that. He generally would do it all himself, though, to be clear. I'm not going to overstate what I did. But, but as he moved along, I think he was getting more focused on other things, and so he would sometimes, like, further in the run. I stayed on for a long time. That was the thing, too, is... Um, I looked at opportunities like that as opportunities to learn. So even though I was starting to get my own work at Wildstorm after about two or three months, um, I stayed on assisting Alex for at least a year just because of the experience of the stuff that I was inking was n n not really at the level of J. Scott Campbell and Alex. So the opportunity to even just spend time with them as I got to know them better um, and, and be around... Uh, people that cared so much about their work i really think it had a big impact on me i've i've said a million times that there's a lot of j scott campbell in my work just um like uh it happened sort of without my knowing but i think that there was some similarities kind of before too uh like natural like natural similarities and then you know obviously like being a fan early on i always think that those early influences seem to stay with you more you know whatever it is it's just it's, the, it's probably just that you looked at it so much more than anything i never i never really sat down and tried to analyze jeff's stuff that way i just enjoyed looking at gem 13 because it was drawn nicely you know fun characters and i mean i remember kind of go thinking it was a little bit goofy it seemed a little f you know like calling a character grunge i thought it was a little kind of corny but uh you know it's comics like flight up, bridge <laughs> this is cool this is good he really moves the camera around. I mean, it's it's just he does everything so well that it just seems normal. Like you just go, yeah, that's what that panel should look like. And then you know, it's some little subtle crop or something that uh, you know he does that just makes it super badass. So this is one, two, three, four, five panel page. He really got a lot of big shots for a five panel page. I mean, I think a good takeaway from this, besides the fact that it's sexy is uh, he was able to draw a nice big shot of Sydney. This is Sydney Savage, right? Um, he's got a smaller panel and a medium panel. And I mean, this kind of reads as sort of a large to medium panel. It's, she's actually bigger in this shot than she is here. Um, but yeah, for a five panel page, he was really able to get quite a bit of impact where, you know, um, as things moved along in comics, sometimes you would just get five panel pages where everybody was like this size, you know, where it was five panels, kind of widescreen. Um, but the image style could be bigger and in your face. But I still think that he got a decent amount of storytelling here, and this is nice. Yep, that's good. This is nice. Really, really cool shot here. I love how he turns. So, let's see, is this... Yeah, I mean, he kind of, it's it's like, uh, this is a little, like, the ground plane in this one is a little kind of that way. And then, and the, yeah, then this is, you know, makes it exciting, you know, because I'll be honest, I think, or last though, right, yeah. Like I said, I, I've got a lot of people learning to draw through Patreon and, you know, I know the temptation is there to draw something like this, but if you really, really look at what Jeff did, just turning the panel makes it seem more dynamic and, and really feel like he's done something otherworldly where it's really the same shot that maybe like a more sort of beginner to you know intermediate decision that you might make, like a choice with the shot, but you really need to. This is cute. And then this is real nice. I love how he turned the figure here. I'm sorry, I'm not on brush. But this is nice. And then her back coming around. It's really, really good. And even this foot going away from us is a really, really nice touch. And I mean, again, this is another great example of really six panels. Um, and, and boy, he just gives you some big shots. That's a nice, nice big head. You've got this beautiful big figure here. And then nice medium shots too. So 
he he didn't have to shortchange you with storytelling action or you know eye candy splashiness and trust me this dude can get down and dirty with small panels if he needs to he's definitely we don't really need to look at this too much I'm trying to focus on the story whoa I didn't even see that I grabbed those that's funny what oh this is the recap or something okay okay here we go this is issue four I must have been still an issue six, uh, six. yeah because it was I think there were seven issues this is nice. I was very cool too. Is so I shared an office with Jeff as he was creating Danger Girl, and I was able to watch him really design just about everything. Not not every day, but um, I really was able to see it from just basic ideas to um, you know fully realized comic. It was very very interesting. But even stuff like this, like the symbols of the hammers. I mean, he it's in I think the Danger Girl sketchbook. He did a page of like 15, maybe 20 designs, you know, he would take things like the Marilyn Manson symbol and the Soviet Union and, and, you know, look at them and kind of try to decide, you know, what made them powerful, what made them interesting and, and, uh, one, two, three, four, five, I'm obsessed with panels and sizes right now. He just nice caps. <laughs> if you've ever had to draw a character with a hat, you know it can be a pain in the ass. So this is one of the pages that I inked. It was a hard one. This is what I'm talking about. This is this page is no joke, man. It's a lot of stuff. I mean, look at these keyboards and all the stuff that I had to do. It's crazy. All the wires and stuff. This was real time consuming. Another thing that Jeff would do, and I'm trying to remember if he did it on this page, is sometimes, I think this was all part of the page. And so what he did is um, he had a, a blank board that had like maybe four other drawings on it, kind of like that maybe or something, that um, was these panels. So it would be this the tight shot of her face they're not stats i don't think from other pages maybe some of them are but some were drawn specifically for this page so he's that crazy that he does stuff like that these two were actually very time consuming to do so i mean like honestly like breaking it down something like this would probably take about an hour to ink you know an hour an hour an hour you know, so you're looking at maybe four hours just to do that panel. Five hours, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know. And then you got to go and fill in all the blacks. <laughs> Look at this over here. What are you doing, Jeffrey? Black between every button? That can't be done. He's like, oh, it can, and it shall. And you're just the guy to do it. And that's what I said. I said, what the hell? That's why inkers were dropping like flies on this. Everyone goes, oh, I would never, I would never give up the opportunity to ink, Jeff. You would if you were on deadlines. I inked this page too. This was, I think, the first page that I inked. Her leg looks a little weird to me right here, but I don't remember what the pencils look like. Yeah, I think this was the first page I inked. I don't know how I remember that, but I kind of vaguely do. Sometimes the colors too, like uh, it feels like the colors drifted a little bit here. I don't know, something's going off the face. I don't think it's the colors. It's just that one eye behind that hair. It looks, it feels a little low. I'm gonna blame Jeff. No, <laughs> couldn't be me. No, I don't know. I don't. I I wouldn't have changed an eye. So I don't know. Just could be the hair. Sometimes when you have things like that, you know, if you have a piece of hair going through the eye, it can create a little bit of a... Um... Sometimes it works in pencil, and it works a little less in ink, and then when it's colored, it can drift more. It's a real balancing act, you know? Um, I had uh, a page that came in colored, and it looked great. It was colored fantastically. This is on the Crystal Planet stuff. I just saw it like a day ago. 
Um, and uh, in the pencils and inks, one of my faces seemed to look fine, but when it was colored, one of the eyes sort of bothers me. But I just think that it's, you know, one of those things that, the, you know, when you've got white now in both pupil and the rest of the page is blue and light beige and greens and all this stuff, all of a sudden the stuff can read just a tiny bit different it's real interesting so this is another one too where this i inked but i think i inked on another sheet of paper but it was drawn for this page this i think was on the board i don't remember i'm not 100 percent sure i don't think that these were stats it might be but i don't know this definitely i remember inking he has crazy fingers. I kind of draw my hands a little bit like that, too. I have sort of wacky fingers. I think I'll reel it in over time, but uh, I always kind of enjoyed how he drew hands, and I think that that sort of carried over on me a little bit. My hands are a little um, a a more animated style <clears throat> than um, realistic, but, you know, I'm still cutting my teeth with this stuff. And also, uh, Crystal Planet, I'm definitely approaching more in a... Um, a fun comic style than you know something more gritty and and maybe that would not you know this to me could appeal to a lot more people than um jaylene namor as an example a lot of us love jaylene namor but you know what i mean it's it's like it's very dark it's kind of you know has a different sort of vibe to it so painting in broad strokes but i'm just saying like blaster kid versus crystal plant they're very very different things so it, it's really actually quite fun trying to work in a style like this it's a little more open a little more direct and uh you know i'm fusing multiple ideas i think though or at least to me when i look at my stuff i, I feel that way that uh nothing is too calculated but just you know Man, it's so good. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. I did a lot of this fight. I don't think I did this page, though. This fight was hard. You'll see why when I... There's one page in particular. I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't think I did this page. I'm nearly sure I didn't. That's how long ago it was. I, I know. I, I'm nearly sure I did that page, though. <laughs> I did this page. And the tattoos were, I think, um, on different uh, sheets of paper. But what he would do is he would probably, like, he would draw, like, the figure like this and then light box um, uh, so that it would sit on the form. He's super, super um, methodical with stuff, so, um, yeah. And this is all speed lines or, um, like, uh, you know, like Hunt 102 where I would take a ruler and so these lines were originally in black and then they knocked them out. Not this stuff, but these are actually ink lines and these are ink lines behind this. And all this chicken wire fence and stuff like that was real time consuming all the bolts. I think, man, I'm trying to remember. What's crazy to think that I was doing this style of inks and inking Travis really right around the same time because these are so different. Oh my God. I mean, you can't even really compare the two, but... Uh... Look how thick the lines are, and the rendering is more. Um, I, I, I what would I call this? Where the lines look kind of more like that, you know, and you have like the a little bit of. It's not like Scott Williams. I've always attributed this particular style of inking to Alex, just because. I I think he sort of was the one that that really owned it. You could see a lot of the sort of same isms in Tim Townsend's work. Sydney. This is nice. This is three, four, five, six panels. Again, it never his pages never feel cramped. He gets a lot of bang for his buck. This is a lot of characters right here. You know? All these dudes running. 
but you know, one thing for for pencilers out there that are aspiring to do stuff of this quality, remember that Jeff probably uh, didn't do most of these pages in a single day. So I would say that most of them probably took three days, meaning um, there's the layout process, penciling it, and then final pencils. So my guess is I'm going to say the average was three days a page. Now, how many hours would that be? Maybe not, like, I think that could be confusing because you might go, well, three days, that's 24 hours if you worked eight hours a day. The time might have not taken that long. Trying to remember, I don't think he shades in the black and pencils on this guy when he draws them. So I think it's more of like he does outlines and then you know going into it that, um, you know, you're going to be doing um, like the lines. And Oh, I didn't realize I had more canvas down there. I, I thought the, the black was actually off of Photoshop, but you know what I mean? I think he does it like that and then you know that all these lines are going to be in white so you can either you know memorize it or whatever you're going to do to get through it but uh yeah for years i really was not that confident with it because i didn't really draw that well to um be able to put all this stuff back in i think in an appealing way um and also it's always it's really weird to draw on a pencil or stuff especially when they draw as good as someone like jeff or Travis or Baklo or any of those guys like when it's like a big black area and all of a sudden you have to go in and kind of redraw everything in white um, you know because it's it ends up to me looking more like your style so I don't know I'm, I've always been pretty respectful for the pencilers work um, you know meaning like uh, I want it to look like their stuff I don't I I don't remember who inked this. I don't think it was me. I think I want to say this might have been Sandra. I like I said I, I hate to guess because I don't I don't know. It's funny because for some reason I remember inking a hallway like that, but I don't know. It could have been anything. It could have even been another job. That's the only thing that looks familiar to me. I did this page. Whoa, sorry. I definitely did this. As you can see, some of the kind of waggly stuff down here. So that's what I do is I do like a line like this. And get it closer and closer together. And then I'll put a second line through it. So the thing with that technique is a recommendation is if you do it here you really kind of should follow through with it in other places that are the same material you'll see right here i didn't um but uh normally i think if you hop back and forth and don't do the second render it can kind of look weird and generally speaking i try not to use it on multiple things so in a perfect world i would have probably feathered with a brush more on the figures and use that technique on um the materials more but Garner had kind of already established that even on the figures or, or you know, between Jeff and Campbell, they had, I mean, Jeff and Garner, they had agreed that that would be the look for everything. Um, I try to mix it up a little bit, so. And this is cool. I love how it goes from this to this. I'm assuming this is two different doors, you know, from different directions coming in, possibly. Oh, the doors are closing. The doors. Who's closing the doors? Ah, uh, you know what? Maybe it is the same guys. I don't know. Even this, dude. <clears throat> he drew the shit out of that. God, man, he's so crazy. And this is all real time consuming to do. You know, you can go with a brush and kind of block it in, but a lot of times you'd have to go with white and do some of these... Um, separations and even this like his hair her hair whoo it's a lot of work well i hope that this is fun oh what time i don't know what time it is what time is it well i want to check the time it is drum roll okay yeah it's funny i have such a high tolerance for these videos now i could do them and do them and do them for days 
This is cute. Really, really pretty face there. You get some pretty lively lines. Like this is really like I think it's a lot of a lot of curves. And that was the thing too, is it was actually quite fatiguing. Um inking he he does a lot of like s curves like this and stuff like this and boy i'll tell you what it really really works your wrist i'm surprised he doesn't have carpal tunnel from all the um swirliness of his work because it, it definitely you could feel it it was working muscles i think most people you know your natural tendency as an artist is you do stuff like this so you may have curved lines like this but he uses it a lot you really start to look for it you'll see it with like you know, a ton of the stuff that he does, and uh, yeah, it'll beat you up. It'll beat you up. Oh, these are so cool, man! Raiders, it's gonna go down. Gotta start to hustle just a little bit. Oh man, the villain's so cool. There's a weird part of me that thinks that I inked this page, but I honestly can't remember. I might not have. I don't know. I can't tell by looking at it. I I really don't remember. I kind of remember this, and I don't remember this. I don't remember this. I don't know. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> it's so funny. I have photocopies somewhere of the pages that I did, but man, it's tough to remember. It was a long time ago. I think also because I've looked at the book quite a bit. There's definitely pages that I'll be able to remember that I did. Uh, hmm. I know I did some with this old dude. Some of the shots, like, like Jeff actually does pace out his storytelling um, quite a bit. And so you, you sometimes will be in a scene for a long time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I haven't seen a ton of seven panel pages with this, or eight. But, you know, he gives you the small, he gives you lots of medium stuff here, and then a nice big shot right there. So, still spicy for the eyes. I'm pretty sure I did this page. Yeah, Natalia. <laughs> Only you, Abby. I did this page. This one got colored weird. It was weird. I don't know what happened here, but this, like, they didn't finish the face and the arm. It almost looks like flats. So I don't know if this was colored towards the end, but it just, you see what I'm saying? It doesn't seem like it got enough color. This looks unfinished. So, yeah, this is what I call the colorist leaving your ass hanging. Um, because when things aren't colored right, it just makes the line work look weird. Because the color, for some reason, does kind of overpower the ink line. But you know what I mean? Like, like if, if something is done like that, it just sort of, you go, why, why do the, li well, the lines don't look right? So it makes her mouth look like, what is going on there? But, you know, yeah, it's weird. I have to look at the pencils, but I think, I think her mouth is supposed to be closed. You know, it's kind of like, she's like, it'd be a little more like that. And this is part of her chin. But it makes it look like this is supposed to be her mouth open, like she's like that. I don't think she is. So the color is kind of leads you to believe that her mouth is open. That's cool. Fight. And she actually had funny, like, little word balloons. I did this piece. Uh, this. 
the priest is like, you'll never take me alive. This is all black. Like, if you see it in, um, like, the original, it was, like, kind of ink more like that. And that's a lot of work. Try filling in blacks on something like that. You're going to be spending some time, friends. Some serious time. This could have took three hours, maybe longer. Because inking it would be fast. You could outline everything real quick, you know, maybe an hour. Filling in the blacks on that would take a little while. Grab your small pen and just get ready to spend some time. I think I did this piece. It's funny because I I actually did an eBay auction years ago. I've I've joked about this. I did I did an explosion page for J. Scott Campbell. I did an explosion page for Umberto Ramos, and some other pretty popular penciler. And I did, but there it's just an explosion. There's like nothing else on the page, and I did a. Uh, it was the three pack explosion page auction on eBay years ago. <laughs> but it wasn't this page. I'll show you the explosion page. I did this too. Really pretty water. It's nice. I was like the way that this page got inked. I thought it looked good. It had some balls. I'm not 100% sure. I think at this point I might have been inking Bacalo. So I had my beefy, bold sort of thing going. So this would have been post... Post Wildcats, inking Bacalo. This is cool. This was a two-page spread in the book. I'm pretty sure this is Scott Williams. I, I vaguely, vaguely remember that was Scott. But I could be wrong. This is nice. It's colored well, too. And this, you know, again, this is probably some crazy-ass overlay that Jeff did on another board or, or maybe on it, but I guarantee that this was drawn and inked. So this is all line work in here. He might have even done the lettering. Jeff is that nuts, although I don't think that... I think that that's actually, like, lettered. You know, like a, like a font kind of thing. But I bet money that he did this. He is nuts enough to do this, though, just to be clear. I wouldn't put it past Jeff. <laughs> he cray cray. This is cool. Really, really great. I mean... You know, obviously it's kind of like the Indiana Jones thing, but boy, the shot works and their hair blowing and stuff like that. It really, really ramps up the um, excitement of it. It's really good. Man, that's great. He really captures a moment. I mean, you know, without their hair kind of going those directions, it wouldn't really be as exciting, you know, if, if, if he went with sort of, you know, her hair down, you know, and, and this just doing kind of the regular thing. Um, so the fact that he and Andy, you know, kind of orchestrated this so well, and he did the storytelling great. The shots are great, but that uh, definitely makes it very, very cool. Man, so good. Well, this is fun. I'm glad that we finally got to see some of the other parts of the book, because I know I had done the uh, beginning a couple times. I did this page, too. The Hammer Youth. <laughs> yes. okay. I did this page. Skeletons. This took a while. This was a lot of work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's a seven panel page. Nice open panel at the top. I like that. He's got three insets and then some fancy schmancy two pack right here. There's a little beat. His foot's down, then he crunches him. And then we get the sort of shot, you know, the, the payoff. Yeah. It's really good. Colors are great on this, too. Man, it's really, really nice looking. I did this. Ripping apart a zombie. Grabbing the Gatling gun. He's ready to go to town. 
get him. Oh, this video was supposed to be shorter, Rich. What are you doing? Well, it's the grand finale. I'm I'm taking a break from YouTube for a few weeks, so. But I will be back for Kelsey and Rich, just, just in case you didn't gather that. So I'll do the one, and then I think I'm going to take a break until I finish Crystal Planet, and then get get the um, next wave of uh, Blaster Kid pre preview art out. This I ink too. This was great. I really like this page. It's really, really difficult for me to to pencil and and organize everything. Well, pencil and ink on top of it, but uh, it's a lot of brain energy right now, um, and uh, I. I don't want to feel stressed out and overextended, so it's just better. You know, you're going to get better quality work from me, which is really what people want anyway, ultimately. It's fun seeing videos, but, I mean, we want kick-ass art, so I need to be on it. I've learned a lot over the last couple of months. It's been a tremendous growth curve. Uh, for me, uh, in terms of at least taking in information. Now it's you have to assimilate it all. I remember I did a helicopter page, not this one, I don't think. Um, but uh, yeah, this this was pretty hard too. It's probably coming up. Like I said, some of these sequences go a long time. And there's very similar shots. I know I didn't ink this, but I'm just saying is like that's why I get a little confused. Is like I'm like I know I ink these characters, but uh, yeah. See, this is a tough one. I'm nearly sure that I did this, but I'm not positive. Wow, that's crazy that I can't remember. I don't remember doing this helicopter, but this all looks familiar. <laughs> I can't really tell from the inks, because, I mean, it's like there's a couple of inkers that I can tell when it's not me for sure, but uh, I don't know. This looks a little... I generally will have some super thin lines, and there's a couple of rendering things that I do. This, I don't know. What do you think, Rich? Is this you or not? You commit to it. What do you think? Uh, I think it's me, but I'm not positive. <laughs> I kind of remember doing this. That's fine. I just don't remember that at all. That's the thing. That's what's throwing me off. Although, you know what? In a weird way, I do remember having to figure out how to do this big arc or, or one like it. I definitely didn't do this. Dun, dun, dun. That's cool. His cape looks awesome. Um, some of, and then again, this is one of those sequences where they keep going back to it. I didn't do this piece, but uh, I definitely did some of this fight. This is nice, though. Really, really cool. I like how he's curved the perspective on it. And even this figure really feels like he's kind of caught up in that um, thing. And dude, the crazy bastard even puts freaking rockets up there. And all this stuff. Jeff doesn't mess around. He's on a mission. I did this. This was hard. This was fine. I mean, fun, you know, fun, kind of good, powerful inking. This is all cool. This right here. Settle in, Buttercup, because you're going to be here for a while. It's like, welcome to the jungle, baby. You're going to die. He's even got stairs, a little staircase over there. I meant to go the other way. Yeah, that's nuts. Fun work, man. Chunky. Chunky style. 
Uh, I think I did this one. I was never a huge fan of how this page turned out. Not necessarily the inks. I just think that it felt a little more, like, almost too open from the other ones. And I thought that the scarring on this guy's face maybe didn't completely work. I get where they were going with it, though. But, yeah, it felt like this needed maybe a little bit more, a little more detail. Maybe even Jeff was getting tired at this point. Or, like, a, or almost needs, like, more words or something. It just feels a little sparse compared to everything else, but... I did the best that I could. Okay. Oh, getting towards the end here, friends. I definitely did this, too. So I did a lot of this fight. These were hard pages, man. This kind of feels like what that other page maybe should have had a little bit more of, maybe. He's like, I've established it enough. Enough is enough, dude. I can't keep going back to this. <laughs> His anatomy is crazy. So chunky. That the flex. He's really grabbing him. This is cool. Beefy hand. So what I'm going to do in lieu of lessons and reviews is I'm actually going to up the um, tutorials a little bit on um, uh, Patreon. So um, people will... I'll, I'll post, you know, shorter videos, but you'll still get lesson type material um, a little more frequently. So it'll benefit everyone. Like you'll get the experience of lessons without having to um, get direct lessons. I just can't afford an hour per lesson. It's just too much. I don't know. I did a page like this, but I don't know if I did this. I kind of don't think it's me. I can sometimes kind of tell with the faces. The other, some of the other inkers ink stuff a little bit thinner. Which is ironic, because I definitely sometimes ink too thin. Too thin for a super cartoony style. I definitely didn't do this. This is a lot of work though, man, right? You can tell. Dude, Jeff was a beast. One, two, three, four five six seven and they feel huge how do you do that jeffrey seven pounds feels like squeezing in a lot of stuff this is how he does it he gets nice big heads heads and hands man it's very 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 good <laughs> This was one of the explosion pages, but what was interesting is, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's an explosion is on the board, and then this was drawn separately, and I'm not 100% sure why. There was a there was some feathering and stuff going on. I mean, it's a nice looking explosion when you see it like just by itself without the the blur. But uh, yeah, I want to say I don't know why he wouldn't draw this figure on the explosion, but I. My memory is that the explosion was on one thing and that this was on another. But I don't know. It was like 20 years ago. Who freaking knows, right? I did this page. <laughs> I do know that. It's like, sometimes. Nope, don't say it, Rich. I always like that face. She looks concerned and sad and skeptical. But Sydney says he's right. So if he's right, he's right. Deuce. Okay. Oh, look at the team. So let's celebrate with some champagne. She's like, no go, bro. Sploosh. Three. And then the big, big thing. Oh, look, there's Scott Doom beer. You try not to get jealous when, like, I was never jealous of Scott being in Danger Girl. But sometimes, sometimes, Jim Lee, he would draw, like, people in the crowd. And then he would, like, leave you out. And you were like, was I not crowd worthy? Why am I not in the crowd? You drew five other Wild Stormers. Why not me, Jim? <laughs> Why not me? <laughs> I did this page too. Um, uh, but you know, Jim used me as the model on a Hunter Bullets cover or, or like a pinup that he did that's 
Lono. Pretty cool. It's, and then there was a Deathblow piece that he did that's very, very cool. I think it was the cover of like a collected Deathblow thing of Jim's work. Um, that's me. It looks like it looks like Deathblow in like a pillbox with like a machine gun. Something like that. It's actually me wearing a Soundgarden hat with like a toy replica, I don't even know, like M16 or some sort of crazy high-powered rifle. When we took the photo originally, I think we were just goofing around though. I think it was just one of those things that we had at the studio. Um, and uh, it ultimately, he just he remembered it or something that I did this. All right, you guys, have a great day. That was fun. I mean, uh, hopefully that's some good vitamins for your uh, brain in terms of storytelling ideas, attention to detail, um, you know, camera movement and stuff like that. I mean, Jeff is very, very clever. He's very well studied. I think um, Lieber Mayho was saying that, that, that the difference between sometimes guys that, that are actually really good artists or, or the way that they um, obtain information. Some people just get better and better at what they do and they they study things differently. But Jeff is a real a student of the game. You know, he studies animation. He studies comics very, very intently. And, and so it comes through in his work, movie, you know, movie directing and stuff like that. And uh, it's why his you know, J. Scott Campbell style work has, has a, a cinematic feel and uh, is, is excellent. So, all right, have a great day.